This is the plaintiff, Richard Hall. He says he parked his RV on the defendant's property, and she didn't respect his privacy and barged in on him one day. He couldn't live there under those circumstances. Now the defendant won't pay him back all the money she owes him for rent paid and RV damage. And he wants his $2,124.32 return. That's why he's suing. This is the defendant, Cassandra. She says she felt bad for this guy and let him live on her property. But he turned out to be a real kook. He caused $8,000 worth of damage to her carport. And if anyone's owed money today, it's not him. She's accused of not respecting a tenant's privacy. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $2,542.85 for unpaid rent and utilities. All parties, please raise your right hands. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Milian is not presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right. Um, Mr. Hall, uh, you are suing on behalf of you and Jimmy Beaver for the return of $2,124.32 that you say Ms. Cassandra owes you. Tell me what happened here. Okay, so uh, we met. Uh, Cassandra, uh, I believe in late November or early September, she came up behind us, said there was no overnight sleeping at 3 p.m. So uh, we talked to her and told her we're not planning on sleeping there. And uh, So she was working uh, for the big department store in that shopping center. And um, she tells you, just so you know, you can't sleep here overnight because you're in an RV? Yeah, she ah, thought okay. we were in an RV. That's how we met. Okay. I told her we're not sleeping. We're here buying groceries. Okay. We were actually staying at the place down the road, the RV park, and that's how we met. Okay, you know? so that's how she you met, and then cigarette. what happens? Yeah, she lit up a cigarette. I lit up a cigarette, and that's how we met. Okay. Um, we went there almost all the time. Every time we went, we run into her. We smoked cigarettes. Um, her husband and, well, her and her husband, uh, they're behind on their mortgage. And, uh, so they, I, I offered to help them. I said, you got a uh, place in your yard. I can pay you rent. You know, that's about all I can do. I'm on disability. And, um, so the idea is you're going to park your, your RV on their property and you're going to pay how much in rent? I asked her if she had uh, enough uh, space, but she said she did. And I said, we usually pay a, I mean, 500 a month where we're at and utilities are included. And what did she say? And she agreed to that. So she according to, that. to you, the deal is 500 a month with utilities included. When do you take your RV over there? Um, I went over there to visit her a few times during September, but we really didn't move in until... Um, October the 1st, 2021. Okay. And how does it go? Um, the next day, her friend was there visiting her, and uh, she said that I needed to stop living off of Cassandra, and I needed to get out and get a job every single day, or every single day I needed to fill out job applications. Okay. So you have been, wait, what's this living off Cassandra? You've been there one month, one day, and you're paying rent. Did you tell her that? Yes. All right. She said, well, Cassandra is also nice enough to let you come over here, too. And I said, I was also nice enough to pay her $500. Yeah, nobody's being rent, nice. Too. This is a business arrangement. <laughs> so you're not, nobody's fooling anybody. All right. So now, so what happens? What goes wrong? Why are you here? Tell me what happened that caused you to no longer want, you want a refund of October because you ended up leaving October 11th. So tell me what happened. After I sent her a text about what her friend said, she came storming in that night as soon as I gave her a text. And I should have talked to her about it. I should have. But, you know, I have anxiety. And when I, and when I feel like I, ha I, when I feel like I, I disagree with something, it's hard for me to disagree with somebody and talk to them about it. Um, she came in without knocking. 
she, she was crying. She was so upset. She had her fist out and said she would knock me through my RV window. Well, what were the, the text? What was the hold on? Back up, that. back up. Let's find out what text you sent that made her go nuts like that. Um, not that uh, there's ever a, a reason to, but I really would like to know. It was on the second. Mm -hmm. It was on the second. Okay, look, we paid rent. And I, I better not no hear long. someone tell me I need to be getting a job again. When I came here, I only agreed to pay rent to keep my RV parked. I didn't agree to let you get all up in my business like the way you've been doing. If I'd have known it was going to be like this when we came, we would never have come in the first place. There is a line you don't cross when it comes to friendship, and real two friends know that. I am not saying we won't help you out when you ask because we have already agreed to help you out in exchange for showers and laundry. Forgive us if we don't like being around when you're in a terrible mood. Believe me, we've been through so much blank. We're done with drama. We love you, and thank you for all you've done. We do have a heart of gold, and we will give you the last of anything we have if we have it to give. A lot of people takes our kindness for weakness, but we're also redneck blanks from the South. If you piss us off enough, I know you're wanting the best for us, but we're not used to people telling us what we need to be doing. Don't demand us to do what we don't want to do. Why are you saying all this about her? It was her friend who said it. She was in, uh, in there in front of her. Oh, I she see. She was agreeing with okay. her. Okay. All right. Let me ask you, Miss Cassandra, what was it that happened that, according to him, you walked in all loaded for bear? Um, so I ended up... Um, Allowing them to use my car to go door dashing. Now, door dashing and means that, that they're delivering food and getting paid a fee for doing that. So they used your car to do that. Yes. Okay, go on. Yes. So at that point, um, they came in and um, they had thrown the check engine light on my car. So at that point, I did ask them. I was like, did you see that the check engine light was on on the car? And they go, no. So at that point, I was like, okay, I ended up going to bed, getting up the next morning, and I didn't sleep very well that night on the first. And so I had taken a nap and woke up at about six or seven. And then I had received that message from Richard and Jimmy. And at but that when point, had you and your I, friend been there and the discussion come up about them getting jobs? That I wasn't in there for that discussion. I was outside taking care of the dogs and the chickens. Okay. I was not inside for that. All right, but when had that taken place? October 2nd? Yes, October 2nd, okay. early in the so morning. So you get that text, and what do you do? At that point, I went outside, and I knocked on their door to the camper, and I asked them what was going on. I said, I, I didn't understand the text message, nothing. And I... I just had woken up to this text message so it was yeah but were you mad i didn't know how to take it no i was i was upset i wasn't angry i was hurt i think that's what it was it was i was more hurt than and angry. what happened during that discussion with them um so my husband was in there at the time and i told him i says i don't understand where this is all coming from i said I, and then at that point, I had explained to Jimmy and Richard, I said, I wasn't in the house when Melissa was talking to you. I said, I was outside. So I knew. Okay, did anybody threaten anybody with place. physical violence at this time? Listen, according to you, Mr. Hall, she says she's going to what? Knock me through my RV window. Okay, did and you she threaten to it. knock him through his RV window? No, like, ma'am. Okay, so. When do you decide to leave and why over this that happened October 2nd, Mr. Hall? No, on October the 11th, uh, I believe it was October the 11th at 12 o'clock at night, my significant other's uh, uh, ex sent me a friend request. After seven years, you don't think I'm still going to be mad at you. But anyways, I was arguing with my hu significant other about it, slash husband. Anyways, uh, I told him, I said, well, she's your ex. You need to uh, do something about it, you know, send me a friend request, you know. Well, we was only arguing for 15 minutes, and the RV is so close to the house, and she's outside smoking a cigarette, I guess. Anyway, she's so mad the next morning about it. Okay. You know, and she thought I was talking about her. I didn't know she was outside my door. 
Okay. Listening in. And, and according to you, what is it that matter. happened? Did you tell them they had to leave or did they decide to leave, Miss Cassandra? Um, they decided to leave on their own. Nobody forced them to leave. Okay. Did you think that they were talking about you when there was an argument in the RV? Um, well, I had knocked on the door and it was about 1.45 a.m. And they had woken up my son. And at that point, yeah. I knocked on the door to try to tell him to keep it down a little bit. And that was when Jimmy and Richard were arguing and Richard was like, if the bitch knocks on my door one more time, I'm going to knock the camper door into her teeth and knock her teeth down. I didn't say that. Okay. All right. So suffice it to say, this is not a good arrangement. And then you decide, Mr. Hall, that you, you and Jimmy decide that you're leaving. You leave on October 11th, so you want a refund of all of October rent. Mm -hmm. But if you chose to leave, why would, should you be entitled to a refund of the rent? Um, she, uh, she was being mean uh, uh, outside our RV. How? Cussing me out and talking to my significant other about me, and I was afraid to go outside. Okay. All right. And I didn't want to go outside. Well, that's fine, but why would you be entitled to a refund of October's rent if you made a decision to leave because it was uncomfortable. That wouldn't entitle you to a refund. And then you because want $500 for emotional told, distress because what? Because it made you uncomfortable? No, she called the law on me when I asked her for my money back and she told me come meet her at the Grease Monkey and that she would give me my money back. And what, what is that? I don't know. She told me that in a text, but I asked her and I had to look it up. All right, I, generally, what is it, Ms. Uh, Cassandra? It's an oil change. It's exactly what it sounds like. All right, so so it's an oil change place. So you meet her over there, and what happens when you meet her over there, Mr. Hall? Um, she uh, she was supposed to have given me, me and given me back some money. And what made you think that? She, told me. Did she she actually texted you. I have some money for you. Yes, she did. Okay, and yes, then when did. you go there, what do you encounter? Um, uh, I didn't get out the RV because I. At this point, I still didn't want to talk to her. Okay. She came to the door, and she's talking to my significant other at the door. About five minutes later, the police came through. Did you think that there was a warrant out for one of them or something, Miss Cassandra? Why did you call the police to go out there? And why did you have them meet you there? The reason that I had called the police department was because I live in county, and they're in city. So I had asked the police department to meet me at the Grease Monkey to give Richard his mail. I didn't have any other information other than to ask them if they could help exchange the mail so that and give no. Richard and Jimmy the notification, do not contact me anymore because of the messages I had already received, the phone call, multiple phone calls. Okay, but I'm not understanding. You're calling the police to go, you, you call them and tell them to meet you. I saw the text where you said, I have money for you. So you're bringing them there under false pretenses. So he, he thinks that you did that to literally just, you know, get his goose. I had no idea. In my so you wouldn't do anything just to bother them because you're angry with them and you've had this big fight with them? No. No. So you called the police and had them meet you there just for them, for the police to tell them, don't meet her again. Yes, and to contact me. <laughs> and not to contact you. Okay, and then what happens? Um, at that point, um, I had left with my husband and my son, and we drove home. Okay, you're suing Mr. Hall for $20 in gas mileage because you had to drive to the Grease Monkey, um, and then yes. you're suing for repair to the RV. Explain that one to me, $1,104.32. She was trying to stop us from leaving, actually, when I was wanting to leave, because that day on the 12th, she said again that she wanted to knock me through my RV window, but this time, I'll pay the insurance to have it fixed, and I get a lot of anxiety, and I can't fight. Uh, I'm only 120. I only weigh 120 pounds, and I'm sorry, but she's like a football player to me, you know, in my eyes, and my okay, how did your other how did your leave. RV get damaged? Trying to go underneath her carport, she wouldn't let my significant other jack it up. And we have in the past, we jacked it up. Okay, that her carport is an immovable object. 
So if you did, so are you saying well, that when you would go in and out, carport. right? So, but when it's you, one of those metal I carport. understand, but the carport didn't come at you. You scraped the top on the carport. Why would she have to pay you? Did it damage your carport, Ms. Cassandra? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And so like, and she's not counterclaiming. She's counterclaiming for a million things. Ironically, that's not one of them. So in what world would she have to pay you? Let's talk about your counterclaim against them. You say you're owed $564.53 for groceries. Tell me about that. So I, because they had no money at that point in September 8th, when they moved on to property. When did they move they on to your property? He says it was October 1st. On, it was September 8th. Okay, so go on. So at that point, they had no groceries, they had no food, they had no food for their cat, anything. So at that point, I was ordering groceries to um, feed them and feed our household at the same time. How are you dividing up what they owe and what your household owes? How are you figuring it out to the penny the way you have? Um, because anything over an extra, like the Monster Energy drinks or the Starbucks Energy drinks or the Powerade or the Gatorade or the yogurt that Richard had to have for his special diet or any of that is when I went through and calculated everything that was above and beyond what we normally Okay. Purchase. Did she buy groceries for you, Mr. Hall? No. Never? You never accepted any groceries? Never. Okay. Never. Now, the next thing she's suing for is septic pump dump. And do you have any proof of that, Ms. Uh, Cassandra? Do you have the receipts for that? I have those. They're in my husband's bank account. And then what we... Okay, I need proof of it. Do you... I'm sorry. Card. Stop. Stop. I need proof of that. So do you... Do I... Have you submitted your husband's bank account statement? No, because he hasn't been home lately. He has okay. been working. All right. I haven't been able to get a hold do of him. Do you owe her $75 for septic dumping, Mr. Hall? No, because I dumped out of pocket when I got my SSI check. I told her, and my disability check, I told her that I was going to go dump before we came in. Let me so, ask you a question. What's this dentist bill? Whose, bill? whose dental bill is it? 244, actually, I should ask you, Ms. Cassandra, who, $244 for a dentist bill. What is that that they owe you, according to you? So Jimmy's tooth was infected. His face was swollen um, when they came onto property back in September. And at that point, um, Jimmy was in so much pain. They didn't have the money to pay for the dentist. And I told Jimmy, I said, I would pay for it, but I needed to be paid back. At that point, we got him in with my dentist and the dentist pulled his tooth. And I paid the two hundred and forty four dollars. And why is it that you and uh, well, that Jimmy wouldn't owe that, Mr. Hall? You're here on behalf of Jimmy. Why wouldn't Jimmy owe that? Well, because we went to her mom's house for him to work it off when they had to be, uh, build the chicken coop for her two chickens. And, and why didn't she say anything about it when I asked her for my rent back? That's the only thing I can't prove. Well, there's a lot you can't prove. Um did they work off the dental debt with a chicken coop at your mother's house? No, ma'am. There's a sentence I didn't yeah, ever Absolutely. Think I don't I think you've ever said say. anything like that, ever. No. Okay. How are you going to prove that you did? You see how messy all this is? All right. Uh, now, what is all this you're suing for for repairs to your car? Because they used it one day for DoorDash? No, ma'am. They used it from September 8th when they moved on to property until about the first or second because the first of October was when they threw the check engine light and um, I told them they were no longer allowed to use the car. Okay. But why would they have to pay for four brand new tires and a camshaft position sensor repair? How old is your car? My car is the 2013. Okay. So how are you going to prove that the repair is due to the way they drove for DoorDash? Um, because that was when they threw the check engine light on the 1st of October. When you um, say threw the check the, engine light, you that, just mean that the check engine light was on, right? It, it, yeah, it came on on the 1st and they okay. were driving the car. Right. From but how do you know they did the something morning. that caused that as opposed to a degradation with age of a car? Um, because I had just actually fixed the camshaft position sensor. So how do you know that the repair didn't fail as opposed to something else? 
The answer is you don't know. Let's because go through these these ridiculous I lawsuits. Let's get down to let's get down to the nitty gritty, which is you guys know each other what a couple of months basically by sharing a cigarette in a mall, and then you decide that you're going to live inches away from each other, where every single intimate little thing that happens is in each other's grill. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe you don't decide to essentially be almost roommates with someone you know from sharing cigarettes in a parking lot. Maybe that's the plan. Um, you're not gonna get October's rent back. You haven't proven emotional distress, Mr. Hall. Um, you don't get your gas mileage because you're mad you only got your mail and not money. And I do see that she lied about that to get you to go. And you most certainly don't get RV repair because when you pulled in and pulled out the RV, you end up scraping it on her roof. That's a you thing. The roof is an inanimate object. It didn't hit you, you hit it, the carport. Now let's talk about your counterclaim. The groceries, you're, you show, all you've done to prove that is you've shown me grocery receipts. I have no idea if those gross, if any portion of them went to him or didn't go to him. Uh, you don't have any proof on the septic. The dentist bill, um, you guy, Mr. Beaver is gonna pay her because it is not typical that someone pay your dental bill for you and you not have to pay them back. And $1,000 for new tires and a camshaft position sensor repair and your lost wages, I guess to come to court or to do the repair, I'm not even sure, you don't get that. Uh, you're unable to, just because the light goes on while you've loaned them the car doesn't mean that the repair on a seven-year-old car is something that they have to pay for especially if it's been a problem just two months earlier. So they do owe you $244, and you do not have to uh, return any of the money to them. Mr. Hall, on your law and Mr. Beaver's lawsuit against Ms. Cassandra, my verdict is zero. Ms. Cassandra, on your lawsuit against them, my verdict is against Mr. Beaver in the amount of the $244 for the dentist bill. Good luck, folks. Thank you. Richard, let me ask you how you feel about the outcome of the case. Well, I I don't think I was able to tell her exactly everything that happened that the day I left, so it's okay. Listen, the important thing is, what have you learned from this whole experience? Anything at all? Yeah, uh, don't go to someone else's house and pay rent on their property. All right. Well, it's been a tough experience for you. I'm sorry about that. But uh, that's the judge's decision. So you'll have to pass that word along. Uh, Cassandra, how about you? How do you feel? What have you learned from this whole thing? You and your husband? Not to trust people. And not everybody is who they claim to be. Well, look, you are going to get the money for that dental bill anyway. So good for you. And hope that'll end this dispute once and for all. Thank you. Well, that'll wrap up this case. Let's see what Harvey has to say. Doug, in this case, the defendant did not violate the plaintiff's privacy, according to the judge. When we talk about privacy, it's kind of a relative term. It really depends on all the circumstances. Here, they lived so close together that you don't have the same privacy expectation you might have when things are further apart. It is that simple. Judge, do you and your family attend University of Miami events, football, basketball, things like that? Do you visit the campus at all? We live very, very close, and I'm a UM graduate. And I, I feel uh, like I don't go that's... enough now that I hear that question. But right. you do. You go to some sporting events. I'm I not do. a big sports person. I, but... Every now and then to a, a Miami Hurricanes home football game, and more often to Miami Hurricanes home basketball, basketball games. Basketball games, because yeah. they take place on campus. Right. It's a beautiful campus. It really is yeah. uh, super nice. And uh, you know, I remember our kids for Halloween a couple years, like, Dressed yeah. up, paint their faces. Yeah, and dress half up green, half white, with the U on their faces. And they going around, just... going like this. Right. And, you know, 305 <laughs> <Yeah>. stuff. <laughs> what else?